It's my pleasure to uh, introduce you our speaker for today. Uh, 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 his name is Paul Smith. He's a pastor over at Crossroads Church. And uh, uh, Paul has, you know, been a pastor for a long, long time. Uh, has a lot of experience, uh, wisdom to share with us. Um, but I just wanted to tell you two things that I really appreciate about Paul. Um, he's a little bit, he's got a part of Paul, the apostle in him. He's got a part of Barnabas in him. You know the combination, Paul and Barnabas? And uh, so he, he, he's a careful reader of scripture, like Paul. Uh, but he's always got a word of encouragement, like Barnabas. Um, and so I really appreciate it. And I, Paul, come up and let me just pray for you real quick. Yeah, Lord, we, we thank you for Paul. We thank you for him taking time out of uh, his busy uh, uh, schedule um, to come and share with us. Uh, Lord, would you uh, anoint him, uh, fill him with your spirit, give him joy as he preaches to us, uh, and help us to know you better. Help us to love you better mm. as we hear your word. Amen. 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 Thank you, JD. That's very kind of you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just excuse me, my voice goes a bit funny. It's, uh, we've just come from Easter weekend, so I've done too much preaching. My voice is uh, deserting me a little bit. But an absolute joy and privilege uh, to be with you. I, I see some faces that I recognize. So. So I feel a little bit at home, even though it's my first time here. So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. I, I stand before you and want to share just, uh, you know, praying and thinking about today. I um, want to just share with you just some real, from my experience, just some practical encouragement. I, I stand before you as nothing more than just a fellow student uh, of God's word, uh, a lover and follower of Jesus, and a servant to God's church and to his people. And so from that perspective, as somebody who's been in full-time uh, pastoral ministry for 30 years, um, I just thought, what can I share with you what will make sense in this context? And God really, I think, laid something on my heart um, that I have had to struggle and wrestle with and learn the hard way. And I hope I can just plant a seed. And then when the time is right, God will, God will remind you of this uh, that I'm sharing with you today. And it really is, look, I think ministry is just the highest of callings. Mm. It is an absolute privilege yes. and honor to be serving God and God's people. But ministry is not easy. It is rewarding, but it's tough. And I think the thing that we all want is longevity in ministry, right? I mean, that's what you're preparing yourselves for, is to be able to finish this race that God's called you to. And so I was thinking about the group of people that I was ordained with. We were a group so many years ago now. I, uh, I'm an ordained Methodist minister. So uh, my ordination group was about 23 of us. Uh, and now all these years later, I can count on my one hand uh, the number of people that are still in full-time ministry. Longevity in ministry, finishing the race, so important. And I want to share with you one thing that I believe is important to achieving longevity in ministry, and it's this. I think it's really understanding and then nurturing your call. Understanding what God has called you to and then treasuring that, nurturing that is so important towards achieving longevity in ministry. And I've had to learn that the hard way. I think uh, nurturing and understanding your call is part of what James tells us about here. Let me read us uh, for us from James 5, verse 8. Uh, and, there, and there's a phrase there uh, which I've been wrestling with for some time now. Uh, verse 8, James 5. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient, and here's that phrase, 
establish your heart. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And I think this understanding your calling and nurturing your calling is part of that establishing of your heart. Establish uh, to root, to plant, to make stable. To make stable heart, cardia. Uh, Archer defines it as the desire producer. Love it. Love that expression. The, pres the producer of desire, the birthplace of passion. So establishing your heart is make stable the birthplace of your passion. Make stable, secure the desire producer, your heart. And I think to achieve longevity in ministry, to understand and nurture your calling is an important aspect of establishing your heart. Making stable the desire producer. The place where passion is born. Because let me tell you, and I'm sorry to have to say this to you, but um, 30 years into this and having ministered by God's grace in a variety of contexts, uh, mainly in pastoral ministry from small churches. I mean, the first, so my first assignment was I was given 18 churches that I had to look after, 18 of them. And uh, I think that I, you could fit about four of them into the space. So starting there to medium-sized churches to very large churches. So a wide experience. I'm sorry to have to say to you that there are going to be times when you're going to be tired, you're going to be weary. There might be a bit of suffering involved, but it's not always going to be easy, your life of ministry, this thing that you're preparing for now. And the thing that I've come to discover that is crucial, that will sustain you in those times, is your calling. Remembering your call. And part of that remembering your call is understand it. When did God call me? Why did God call me? How did He call me? To what did He call me? Wrestle with it. Understand it, and then you take it and you hold it and you treasure it. And you nurture it. You take care of it. So I think, to, so just a couple of thoughts. To, but to, to understand your call, I think what you need to do is you need to uh, test it and examine it. I think you examine your call in light of God's word and you test your call with God's people. It's an important thing to do. To on a regular basis examine your call in light of scripture. God, I sense you are asking this of me at this time, in this way, in this place. Well, how does it match up to God's word? Is it consistent with what I read in scripture? And then, and then I test it with brothers and sisters, with friends, with family, with, with elders, people I respect, people that I um, am interested to hear uh, their opinion. And I test and say, listen, I think God's saying this to me and I, I feel God's calling me to this and to that. Does that match? Does that sound right? Um, how, what are your thoughts on this in line with what you know about me and my giftings and my talents? Do, do you think I'm hearing right? You test it and you examine it. Will help you to wrestle with and understand God's calling in your life. Even if you think God's calling is fairly simple, rarely is. <laughs> I've come to discover. There are always layers that demands of us some testing and examining and some wrestling. And then once you have a good understanding of, of how God called me, why God called me, to what God's called me, then you take that. And I want to encourage you to achieve longevity in ministry, please, if you hear just this one thing, nurture it. Love it. Hold on to it because there are going to be times when you're going to need to fall back on it. That's solid ground. You nurture it. A couple of thoughts on how to nurture God's calling in your life. Just a few thoughts. I want to say, so the first thing is, is that you and I, I've come to discover, are at risk. And this is, I think, particularly relevant in this uh, environment, uh, in ministry environment. You and I are at risk 
of becoming road signs. In other words, really good, so if you look at traffic road signs, really good at pointing the way, but planted and rooted and never going anywhere ourselves. And that happens because here's the thing that we're at risk at. Whenever we read and study, we tend to fall into this trap of reading and studying books, God's word, for the sake of others. We very quickly fall into this trap where we think, as, so I'm reading, oh, that'll be a good sermon. Oh, I, I need to tell people that. So it's always reading, oh, what can I tell people? What, you know, and so we fail to do what they tell you to do on the airplane. Put on your oxygen mask first before helping someone else. And in ministry, it's a very real danger. Whenever I sit down and I read God's word, I constantly catch myself, ooh, I bet, let me make a note of that. Here's a good point for a sermon. Becoming road signs, pointing the way, but never going there ourselves. We have to, as part of nurturing our core, be mindful of reading and studying firstly for my own soul. And then from that place of nourishment, feed others. If you do it the other way around, it's going to catch up with you eventually. And you'll find yourself dry and weary and tired. It's important to nurturing your core, reading and studying for your own soul first. Then another thing uh, that I think a thought on nurturing our calling is, I think we're also at risk of being Martha's. So busy with this and that, that we stop paying attention to the fact that Jesus is in the room. I'm reminded of Moses and his calling. Burning bush. So we saw it. But will you notice as you read that piece of scripture that it was only when he stopped, turned, came closer, in other words, paid attention, it's only then that he heard God speak his name. And then, of course, speak those incredible words that really is the only words we all ever need to hear when God said to him, I'm with you. I'm with you. And if you want to achieve longevity and ministry, those words need to be ringing in your heart and your ear. You need to hear them. Pay attention. Pay attention to God's voice. Allow God's voice to break through your noise of that fills your day so quickly and easily. Pay attention to your body. Oh boy. <laughs> Are we in ministry notoriously bad at that? Do you know how many pastor friends I've had to visit in hospital after a heart attack or a this or a that? Pay attention to your body. Pay attention to your emotions. Pay attention to your friendships. Pay attention, because there are burning bushes all over the place. But we get so busy doing things, we stop noticing, and it hurts our core. Rest. Oh boy, are we bad at that. For some other reason, we think we are so special that we don't need to keep Sabbath. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> it catches up with you. And I had to realize the hard way, Paul, you're not that special. That you don't need to rest. It's going to find you out. Rest is an important part of nurturing your calling. And then finally, last thought, then we're done. You can go and study and get smart. And <laughs> Last thought is... I'm reminded of the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Great story. So the last thought is this about nurturing your core is you and I have to be so vigilant and intentional and mindful about relying on Jesus' resources 
not my own. Because we very quickly in ministry fall into the trap of relying on our own resources. And to nurture my call is to say, Christ, I want to rely on your resources for me. And the story of the feeding of 5,000 for me is a great example of that. I mean, you know the story so well, but here, here the disciples are confronted with a tremendous need before them. And they're like, Jesus, we just can't, we don't have enough. Uh, we don't have enough to give and feed. And so what's fascinating to me is Jesus goes, so knowing they don't have enough, he still tells them to feed them. And I can imagine just the, ex <laughs> the expression on their faces like, did you not hear us? <laughs> but I think that's precisely the point of the story. I think you and I are meant to understand we are called to something that we can never achieve out of our own resources and strength. Yet somehow we always try. <laughs> but we can't. And so we mean to recognize, I think, that we are insufficient on our own. We mean to, to be so aware of our insufficiency, yet at the same time recognize Christ's sufficiency and rely on that and draw on that. And so what you're doing is you are understanding and you're nurturing your calling and you are making stable the birthplace of passion. You're making stable, you are securing the desire producer so that, you will so that God's desire will be burning brightly within you. Not just for six months or 12 months, but year after year after year. It's no accident that you are here today where you are. I, I firmly believe that, that God is calling you. Make it your business to understand that call. Thanks. Make it your business to understand that call, to nurture that call. And then I look forward to reading about you one day. What you've accomplished for the kingdom of God because you managed to finish the race treasure this most beautiful thing that God has spoken your name your name and said feed my people can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, as I just reflect back on the last 30 years of serving you and your people, and I just bring to my heart's attention just those tough moments, those beautiful moments, but those tough moments, and the thing that sustained me is just remembering my call, returning and reaffirming that call. So I want to, and how that sustain, has sustained me thus far, and I I just want to pray for every person in this room. Here in a season of preparation, as they prepare, help them to know and understand what it is that you're asking of them. What it is they're preparing for, what it is that you are equipping them for. And then to value that and honor that treasure it and nurture it so that they will finish this beautiful race that you have called them to I pray your blessing upon the staff the lecturers the students on this this organization the work of Tyndale May this place truly be light, life, love in this world of ours. And moving from this place, leaving this place, taking your light and love 
and life with them wherever they go. Transforming the world for Jesus. We pray it in your beautiful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. Brothers and sisters, we had